it's funny, as a parent, how you remember certain things that happen in your children's lives. The moment that they're born, the time they were born, how much they weighed, their first smile, their first tooth, all the happy things that are embedded in your brain. But one thing that you don't expect to have embedded is when you lose a child. January the 7th, 2012, it'd just been a normal day for, for myself and my family. I'd been out for lunch with my friend and my husband was at home painting and my daughter, Bethany, was in town shopping with her boyfriend. Later on that day, I was sat at home waiting for Bethany to, to come past and I seen two people walk past our front room window because we live with a footpath running past and I said to my husband, is that Bethany? And he said, no, it's the police. And I thought, well, we're the last bungalow on the footpath, so they can't be going any further. And then through the glass in the door, I could see two fluorescent jackets stood there, and I knew that they were coming to our house. So I answered the door, and they asked if we had a daughter called Bethany, and I said yes. And I automatically thought, oh my goodness me, what has she done? Because she's not a naughty girl. I couldn't think for any reason why they would be at our door because she'd done something wrong. And they asked if they could come in. And they came in and they asked us questions about, you know, did we know where Bethany was and who she was with and what time she was expected home. And all you want them to do is tell you the reason why they are there. And I remember my husband getting quite cross at one point and saying, just tell us why you're here. But the policeman didn't actually tell us why she, they were there. He, um, my husband said to him, has something happened? And he said, yes, there's been a crash. And Bethany had been involved. And my husband said, is she okay? And the policeman never said, no, she wasn't okay. It was almost as though he couldn't bring himself to say it. And I remember my husband just saying, no, 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 when the policeman said, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. And that split second, it's quite strange because all the things run through your head that you're not going to get to see her do. And it's, it's crazy because you've just been told your daughter's died and all the things running through your head are the things that she's not never going to get to do anymore. And I remembered I opened the front door and ran outside. And I could hear this awful, awful howling like a wild animal. And the policeman came out after me and I was looking around thinking, where on earth is this noise coming from? And then I realised that it was me. It was me making this noise. Bethany was on her way home from shopping and just outside of the village which we live in the driver of the car was driving too fast and lost control when a car came round the corner and he crashed into a tree and Bethany took the full impact of that tree and died at the scene. I remember asking the policeman where she was because this had happened earlier in the afternoon. And it was a couple hours after they came and knocked on our door and I asked where she was. And they said that she was just being removed from the scene and taken to the mortuary. On well, the following day when we had the police pick us up, and take us up to Taunton, even going up in the car. He said he wouldn't drive us past the scene of the crash on the, on the way up, that we'd go a different way and sitting in that waiting room, waiting for 
him to say it was okay for us to go in and basically identify Bethany. Even up to then, I just kept thinking, it's not going to be her, it's not going to be her. And we did go in, and I remember my husband collapsing on the floor. And I just felt really, really calm looking at her because I knew she, she might be worried and upset if she'd seen that I was upset. So I kept really, really calm and just stroked her little hair and kissed her cheek. And then I noticed that her lips were dry, so I went back out and got some lip, lip balm and put on her lips for her. I think of all the things that Bethany's never going to get to do. She's never, she's never going to get to be able to learn to drive. She's never going to get married. She's never going to get to have children. Which is one of the things I knew that she would definitely, definitely have wanted to do because she loved babies so much. And every day you wake up, and the first thing you think about is Bethany. And then throughout the day when you're doing things, you think, oh, oh I must remember to tell Bethany that. A little bit of gossip. And I can still tell her. I can still tell her these things. But I have to go and sit at the side of a grave to be able to say these things to her now. And sometimes when you go to bed and you go to sleep, we might be lucky enough to have a dream that you're doing things together and it makes you feel so warm and happy. And then you wake up and for a split second, you still have that warm feeling inside of you because you think it's actually happened and it's real. And then you remember this. And you're not going to get to see her again. I'd heard the people say before that when you when you lose a child it's like it's like a life sentence and it is. It's three and a half years on for us, but it might just as well be yesterday. And every day when I go to, to bed I say a little prayer to Bethany and thank you for helping me get her through another day. Because we don't really live anymore, we just exist. And that's a horrible feeling because I know that it's never going to go away. It's going to be with me forever. I'm never going to be a, feel like a normal person again because I'm always going to have this pain and peace would be missing. And all this because of somebody's stupid mistake. Somebody inexperienced and driving too fast. 